Hey, hey, y'all. Good morning, morning. We are back for another fun drawing and lettering tutorial. This is a totally free. Um, <clears throat> so I hope you take advantage of these freebies that we are uh, throwing out at you. This is a great way just to get your, get some practice, get, grab a pencil. Uh, I promise you will surprise yourself. This is what we love seeing. Um, women do all across the country for years and years and years. We have heard ladies say, um, I can't draw a stick person. I can't do this. I don't know about that. I've never been able to, you know, to, to draw anything. I don't know about that. All this self-doubt, but when we break it down one step at a time, it's so much easier. We are here to guide you and we love, we do this with our kids too. We love to show our kids in our art classes. We say, you know, look at this picture. Do you think you can do it? Or do you think it's going to be a little bit hard? And some of them will be like, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit hard. We're like, raise your hand if you think it's going to be hard. All these hands go up. And I'm like, okay, at the end of this hour, I'm going to show you. You can do more than you thought. So, yes, maybe it's hard. But the, at the end of this class, you are going to have an awesome picture. And you're going to be proud of yourself. And that's what I feel like for y'all today, too. If you will take the time to do this, you might start out feeling like, oh, I don't know about, about this. But by the end of this, maybe 30 minutes, maybe. Uh, I don't know if it'll take that long or not. It won't take long. Um, but into 30 minutes or so, you're going to surprise yourself. You're going to uh, say, hey, that's a little bit better than what I thought I could do. And then the more you do it, oh, gosh, the better you get. Oh, look. Ah, oh, Lordy B. Okay, let's just pull some hair out of my head. I love this little bracelet. <laughs> this was a gift from a dear friend, but goodness, it just yanks my hair out. Um, so, all right. So, here we go. We are going to... Um, to go over the supplies that we've got, and then we're going to go start uh, start into this. But let me also tell you, this may be the last lot, like freebie. Maybe we might can fit in one more. I'm not sure before our workshop starts. Now our workshop starts next week. It will be doing this drawing. It's going to take a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, but not too terribly long. Drawing, painting, hand lettering over here. Um, so we're going to go over all of that. The hand lettering part, the, the drawing, and we're going to do it on three different surfaces. So on a watercolor piece that you can mount like that on a card. And we're going to show you some Bible journaling too. Every morning during that workshop, the workshop is hosted on a private Facebook group. Every morning, we're going to have um, what we call morning mindsets, where it's just a, a devotional, a way to start your day, um, get your thoughts on whatever is good and true and pure. And then at night at 7 p.m. every night is when we will do our classes. It'll be three nights. So um, during that time, you will create lots. Uh, but if you want to sign up for that, it's a week away. So the link is in uh, in the description of this. So be sure to sign up if this kind of stuff is interesting to you. If you know that you need peace and play in your day, you know that you need to carve out time just to do something for you. And this is something you can do from a spare bedroom, from your kitchen table, from anywhere. Um, and it's so beneficial. So if you need that, sign on up and we would love to see you inside the workshop. But for today, let's get started with this one. This is actually a picture. We had a lettering uh, bonus box that we did <clears throat> over Christmas. And this is one of the products from there. Now, I'm not going to do this exactly the same because uh, this used a different type of marker. Uh, this is a, a Tombow marker. These colors are Tombow um, dual brush tip markers. But today, I'm going to do something similar. This is our inspiration piece. It's going to be something similar. I'm just going to be using my Crayola watercolors today. We love Crayola. If y'all don't know, y'all, we've got tons of uh, videos over on Crayola. We partnered with them for several years. Um, <clears throat> if you go to go to Crayola, click on videos and scroll down. You'll see uh, Doodling with Casey. And uh, there's lots of things that we did for kids, but adults like it too. So be sure to check that out. But we, we love Crayola. Lots that you can do. I've got a watercolor just pad. Now, if you don't have one of these, you may love this just for practice. This is not ideal for if you're going to frame it because it's sometimes hard to get these out. They're, they, they are, you know, you can tear them out, but this is great for you just want to doodle. You just want to have somewhere to every day be able to draw and paint. These are great for that. Uh, so it's just like this. It's just the watercolor. You can get them in the pad. And this is just that um, spiral bound type. So I've got my watercolor paper, my Crayola paint. I've got my pencil, a Sharpie. This is a waterproof pen. Now, if you are in that, um, I'm going to just take this off so I don't 
yank my hair out anymore. Um, if you are in that, um, the beautiful blooms workshop, we talk about a waterproof pen. This is the one that we use a lot. Any waterproof pen will do. This is a uniball. It's just kind of got, let me pull it up. It's just a little small tip. So you don't have to have this exact one. You just want one with a small tip so you can do fun line work and one that when you add water to it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't turn black. So I think that's all we need. I think that's it. These simple supplies. Oh, and this water cup and a brush. And as far as the brush, we're using a size six round. And this is the same size that we'll use in the class next week as well. So, um, so let's get started. So we're going to start with our lettering. So we are going to do shine bright. I'm going to take myself out of the picture so that I can get a little bit closer here. So let's remove this. Pull it on down. Good morning. I see so many of y'all popping in. Deb and Tammy and Paula and Michelle and Barbara. I love it. Jessica, thank you so much for those kind words. We appreciate that too. Uh, lots of y'all are on here. Rhonda and Beth. So I'm um, so glad y'all are joining us this morning. All right. So here we go. Shine bright. So I'm going to kind of do this right inside here and um i don't want it to be too terribly big because i know i want to fill flowers on the side so here we go if it helps you you can draw a very light guideline kind of at an angle i'm not going to at the moment uh because i think i can do it without it but if it if if drawing at an angle feels really wonky to you just draw you a guideline and then erase it later all right so here we go we're going to come up, over, and now watch this. This is just going to come out right here. I can already see I want to raise this up a little bit. Hang tight. Hang tight. <clears throat> this is the shape that I want, that I want it to be raised up a little bit higher. Okay. All right, so there's my S. Notice it does not come all the way back here. It can if you want to, but it's not. <clears throat> Julie says, uh, crazy question. I don't have very much space. What are you working on? Are you on a card table, artist table? Uh, this is actually what I am working on is a desk that I got at the flea market that I repainted. It um, used to be a desk, they said, in some uh, hotel rooms, like the hotel lobbies. And um, they had them uh, for pretty inexpensive. And so uh, I got it. So that's what it is. It looks like just a, a very small table is what it uh, is. But um, just got it at the thrift store. All right. So there's that S. Okay. For the H, we're going to do this a little differently. Okay. So we're going to come back over here by the S. We're going to loop around. And it's going to kind of curve at an angle and hit right there. That is a fun way to do um, to do this. Janet, I see Janet says that she had shoulder surgery yesterday, so she is just watching. Hey, I think there's a lot of value in just watching too, Janet. I'm glad you're on here this morning. Um, I will say when I think about watching art videos, I think of all the Bob Ross videos that I used to watch for pure entertainment, never painting along. Never. Like I've done one that I painted along with, but I love just watching it. And that's the same even for this. So even if you're not doing the art with us, there are benefits to just watching the process. It can be entertaining, soothing, interesting, all the above. All right. So here's the that part of the H. Now I'm going to come up and down. For the I, it's just going to be up and down. For the end, we're going to kind of loop, come here for a loop, coming over, up and down, and then an E. I'm kind of wanting to change a little bit on this S that's a little different from the original picture. I want to have a little bit more of a tail right here, like this. All right, so we've got shine on there. Now let's go to bright. <clears throat> Again, it's going to be kind of at an angle right up under here. So we are going to do the, this little shape. So notice this. This is very similar to this. 
Uh, Donna says, how do we sign on to StreamYard? Evidently, you already have in the past because I can see you right there. <laughs> so you're good. You're good. <clears throat> All right. So this stroke, this stroke, we do it often. So there's the part of the B. Now it's going to start here. It's going to come up and then I'm going to go up here in this negative space. And I'm about to do my loop for my R. And then we'll come at an angle and down and back up. Okay, for the I, I'm going to kind of start a little bit higher because I don't want it, there to be too much of a gap in between shine and bright. So I'm going to kind of come up a little bit higher for the I, coming down and up. And notice this tail. This tail will determine how close your letters are together or how far away. So if you need something to be uh, spread a little bit farther, this can go out a little bit more. If you need them to be tighter, you just make it like up a little bit closer. So you see how this is a little bit more of an up angle and this is a little bit more of an out angle. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Just a little tip for spacing. This little, this connector piece will help on your spacing. Either make it shorter or make it longer. All right, now here comes a really fun G. So we're going to, uh, we're going to come here. We're going to loop it around. We're going to come down and woo. -woo. Okay, that is so fun. <laughs> so let's watch it again comes here, comes up, over to the left, loops down, up, around, underlines that BRI, and then does a loop below it. So very much fun. And then just like we did this H with this fun little tail, whenever there's room for it, um, it's fun to put in there. So there's room right in here. So I'm going to put the tail there. Going to come a little bit lower. So I've got room for the H. And come up and then my T is just going to come down and up and for that the crossbar I'll just kind of have a fun little wee something like that all right pretty fun pretty fun all right so we have got our lettering kind of on there in the middle now watch what I'm going to do this is a little bit trickier. So if this totally freaks you out, you can just leave it just like this, okay? I'm just gonna try to show you something. <clears throat> so you can thicken the downstroke, but sometimes we will color in where we thicken, but this time we're just going to draw it. So like, for example, right here, I'm gonna draw it right there. And then I'm gonna erase that little line right there. I may even draw this little teardrop. What I'm, the reason I'm drawing this, I'm going to trace all of this with a Sharpie. I'm going to come back in here with paint. So I don't want to make it too like skinny that I cannot paint in there. Uh, so here's the downstroke. I drew that shape. Now I'll just erase these two lines that are inside that shape. Now I'll do the same thing up here. I'm going to draw that shape. There's no lines inside of that, so I can leave it as is. and leave that as is. Maybe I'll make this circle a little bit bigger. On this end, I'll go back over onto the left side, only because I don't have a lot of room to come to the right side. It would fill in this, this circle. So I'm going to come back this way and down. And then erase. Thank you. I see somebody, uh, I just saw it and now I can't see it. Somebody said that they've shared it. Oh, Patty said share the link on my page. Thank you very much for that. If you think that people would enjoy this, feel free to share. We would greatly appreciate it. All right, so now this is going to come up and down. There's nothing to erase here. Come down there, erase this, and then maybe uh, put the little um, put the little teardrop shape right there as well. All right. Hope you're hanging in there. Let's gonna go on down here to the bright. So again, there's if I come to the right of this line, it's gonna close in this loop. So I'm gonna go to the left back this way. That's a common question we get asked a lot: was how do we know like whether to go on the right side or the left side? It really does not matter. We go on the side that they that it's not gonna crowd things. So let's see right here. Go on the right and come around, and then I'll erase that line.
draw that shape. So both of these shapes didn't have any erasing. Right here, I'll just kind of do the curve. Nothing's in there to need to be erased. Uh, let's see. We'll come here. And then right as it starts to curve is where that kind of comes into it. It kind of just blends in to that curve. I'm going to make this whole shape a little bit bigger. Over and down. And one more over and down. Doing a little bit of erasing where needed. And I think that's about it. I don't know that I'm going to add any uh, maybe I'm going to do this here and here. Okay, so we have got um, we've got <coughs> our lettering done. So let's go ahead just with that sharpie. We're going to quickly uh, trace the lettering, and then we will move on to our uh, outside. All right, so here we go. Now here's where it gets tricky. If we erase a line, we're not going to draw through it. And I just kind of did a little bit right there. I'm going to try not to. If you do, it's not the end of the world. But if a line is erased, try not to redraw it. Man, the Sharpie. I swear, we have so many Sharpies in this building and they just, uh, <laughs> they just go with a quickness. Okay, this one's better. All right, so there's that, and we're going to paint in there. Here we go for the, oops, I didn't, I saw just here that I didn't <coughs> erase that. Again, this uh, <clears throat> this technique that I'm doing right now, it is a little bit trickier of drawing these um, down strokes. It's not too terribly hard, but if it's, um, you know, if it feels hard or frustrating to you, know that this is a little bump up on lettering, okay? This is a little bit more advanced than just the first part where you just lettered it is one thing, okay? Doing these thickening of the down strokes and such, that's a kind of a different a different level on it so don't beat yourself up if it feels confusing to you there's all you can always just keep it as is without these shapes drawn in all right looks cute it'll look cuter once i paint it so here we go we are good with this and now we're going to draw our flowers all around the outside so this is just going to be fun and kind of quick um and then we're going to do some line work. So I'm going to do some, like a curve. I really want this to like really have a lot of flower, like big flowers, not little bitty flowers. I want this to look really big. Now for the petals on this, I'm going to kind of do it uh, just almost like, what does this look like to you? Almost rectangly, but not exactly <laughs> uh, on this flower. They they don't have harsh edges, but they are kind of block-ish. Over here on this side, I'll do another kind of half center. These will be a little bit bigger. Uh, they'll be going off the page, though. And these are a little bit different shape, almost like ovals. And see how if I'm going to touch that, I just stop. I don't draw through it. I just kind of stop. So I'm going to do some of these big ones first, and then I'll fill in with the little ones. So down here, I'll do another one. So I'll do a half. This kind of will look almost like a fan blade to me. Uh, how it comes in at the bottom, kind of fan blade-ish.
Okay, so now let's do some a little bit smaller that fill in in places. So a curve, and we'll like do the long skinny. Do the same thing here. This one's going to be probably just overlapping. Or let's just be smaller. Same thing over here. Same shape flower. I taught the skinny little ovals. And if you've got room, we'll do just kind of just some circle, circle-y petals here and something here. All right, <clears throat> so that's kind of got everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our waterproof pen. Now, I say this a lot. I'm just going to say it again. If you don't know if your pen is waterproof or not, all you got to do is scribble on a piece of watercolor paper. Let it set for just a little bit because sometimes the ink is wet. Then you're going to take a brush and some water and you're going to go over it and you're going to see if it's waterproof or not. Now look, this had a little bit of gray. The reason for that, I didn't let it sit long enough. But if there is something that's like really not waterproof, let's see, I don't know if this is or not. Um, if it's really not waterproof, it will be black, black, black. Um, See that like dissipated, <laughs> okay? This, if I let it sit for a little bit longer, it's not even gonna have that gray. When I do the water on top of it, it will be, <coughs> it'll be good. Now you probably have a pen similar to this or something that will work in a junk drawer, okay? I use a lot of pens that I just find. Like, let's see about this one just because I don't know if this one is or not. So this is one that I just happen to have. It's, I don't even know, it says zebra on it. Uh, it's one that you probably will find. Let's just see. It's also got the thin tip. Let's let it set for a bit. And look at there. Okay. Also waterproof. They're not labeled like special waterproof pens. They're just writing pens, but a lot of writing pens are waterproof. So just give it a test and you probably already have something you can use. Okay. So here we go. We are going to do what we call double and triple outlining. So like one, two, three, one, two, three. I just like this look. It helps me to be fun and free with it. Uh, it's just fun. I've also heard from a lot of uh, ladies that say, hey, you know, sometimes my hands shake. Doing this quick double, triple outlining technique helps me with that because it kind of disguises that by going faster. It helps it to, um, you know, to, to not be shaky. So the double, triple outlining is definitely a fan favorite as far as one of our techniques. Uh, Jessica says, I messed the top of the H up. I'm trying to fix it by putting a flower around it. Did you mess it up like with the Sharpie? Um, it's hard for me to know without seeing something. We usually can fix stuff, especially if you haven't put the Sharpie on there yet. All right, so again, double and triple outlining. Jessica, sorry. So Jessica said, with the Sharpie, unfortunately, I I do feel like there's a way to fix it, but I don't know what that's going to be. One thing you may want to do is, uh, I don't know, without seeing it, like these, these flowers are a smaller line. So I'm wondering if you used your Sharpie to do the flowers, if it would be easier. Because there's no way, like let's say I messed up something up right here. There's no way this line is going to, overpower the other, but you might could if you use a Sharpie to do all of the outline. Okay, so now that we've done that double and triple trace, uh, let's on some of these big centers, we're going to give it just a little bit of a, a scribble kind of around the edges. Just a little fun scribble scribble. Doesn't have to be on all of them, but just some of the bigger ones. All right, and then on some of them, you can also do these little lines. I'm going to come in a little bit closer so that you can see a little bit better. 
Okay, so little bitty lines from the center is just another way just to add interest. You don't want them to all be the same uh, height. So some, some small, some medium. How many of y'all are signed up for our workshop next week? If you are signed up and will be joining us, let me know in the comments. I would love to uh, love to see who all is going to be joining us next week. Remember, even if you're not joining us live, which I hope you are, because we're going to be having some fun uh, prizes and such. Um, but if uh, if you are able to join, even if you're if it's within the same day, like let's say you can't join us live at seven, uh, but you can watch it the next morning. You can still get in on some of the prizes that we will be doing. Uh, so if you are going to be joining us, whether live or semi live <laughs> the next day, let us know. So yay, Shirley, Shelly, Rhonda, Cynthia, um, all of y'all. Oh, Cynthia said, are you using a pencil? I assume right now I am not. I used a pencil earlier to draw this out, but right now I've got a pen. Yay, Kate. Um, <clears throat> uh, Patty said me. I didn't get an email, though. Several people have said that. I'm thinking they might go, be going to uh, junk. If you are in that group, but you didn't get an email, it's not a huge deal as long as you get in the Facebook group. Because everything that you're going to get in that email, you're going to get in the Facebook group. So um, if you didn't get into the Facebook group. If you don't have a link for that, uh, it was on the thank you page. Like when you checked out, there was a, a link for the Facebook group. But if you don't, you can always uh, message Leslie at pizzazzart at gmail.com. P-Z-A-Z-Z-A-R-T at gmail.com. She can check to see, uh, you know, she'll see, okay, did you, did you successfully actually sign up? Because sometimes there might be weird things that, you know, you think you signed up, but you didn't. So she'll check that. And then if you did, she'll give you that link to the Facebook group. And as long as you're in that, you're good. Because inside the Facebook group is a supply list that you can print off. There's a video of me going over the supplies. There are some traceables for the lettering that you can print off. Um, all that's in that Facebook group. Sorry, I got the sniffles. I've been fighting a cold for a little bit. I said you don't have to do this on all of them, and then I just started doing it on all of them because it's just fun. <laughs> but on the other, on the first one that I showed y'all, I did not do them on all of them. All right, so there you go. There you go. We've got it all drawn. Now you can, if you want to, if there's some filler space, you can do some fun little, you know, curves uh, here and there. And now it's time for paints. All right. So let's open up our Crayolas. <clears throat> We've got our water. All right. All right. So we're going to do the yellow first. I love this Crayola yellow. The yellow and blue and this uh, kind of pinky purple are some of my favorite with the Crayolas. So we're just going to quickly put some yellow in a few spots. We're not having to be perfect with this because outside the lines, no biggie. I even, I always like to have a little bit of white showing. So you can kind of just lay this in quickly. Make sure when you're doing this that you've got a puddle of water right here. Okay. So I'm never like pushing into the, um, into the pigment. There's always a little bit of water on top. And if this starts to be where there's not a lot of water, that's when I go back to my water cup and I add it right here. So here we go. Going into some of the centers. All right. I think on this center, let's do some yellow and then we'll also put some orange in there for a little extra interest. So we'll do the yellow first. Then we'll pick up a little bit of this orange and kind of put it in there so you've got the two-tone. You have to do this while it's wet and it will kind of bleed together with that wet on wet technique. Also, while I've got my orange, I'll put <coughs> down here maybe on this one.
Okay, let's see. Uh, Cynthia says, are you on watercolor paper? I sure am. I'm always going to be on watercolor paper if I'm doing something where I'm adding water to it. I could not do this on, uh, on traditional copy paper or something. It would not be able to hold it. Or mixed media paper would also be good. All right, so now I'm going to do this fun color. Going to outline it quickly first. Then I've got like a, a darker outline. And then I'll add some water, straight water, to it. And what that does is it just kind of fades it into the center to where the outside is a little bit darker and the inside is a little bit lighter. It kind of just does some value shading for you. Julie says, is this a size six? It is, but I will also tell you that not all size sixes are created equally. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of purple up here as well. Uh, just meaning that not every brand of paintbrush, they all have numbers on them, but not all sixes for every brand are the exact same. Uh, but this is a size six. And then over here, I'm just adding in some purple into it while it's wet, that wet on wet technique. And we'll do this same thing over here. So I'll start with this kind of magenta color. This is a little bit smaller, so you're not going to get as quite of a of a uh, value difference when you add that water, but a little bit. Then pull in some of the purple. Again, we are just using Crayolas, okay? Now, yesterday, we uh, in the past couple of little freebies we've been giving you, I've used a different watercolor palette, one that we sell here at the studio. Um, but I just want to show you that you don't, like, you can use very simple supplies that you can find most anywhere and still have a lot of peace and play. So don't ever let that be a, um... oh, goodness, I just cut out for a second. I hope, hope y'all are still there. On my screen, I did anyway. I hope y'all are. If y'all are there, I'm going to grab some of this blue. So this Crayola blue is so pretty. Will y'all do me a favor and just say here, just like one or two people if you're here, because my screen just cut out and I hope that it didn't cut out for everybody. Um, okay, so I'm going to go. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, thank you. I saw all yours first. We're here. All right, good deal. <laughs> good deal. All right, so I'm going to go do some of the centers with the blue. Isn't this a pretty blue? So pretty. I'll do a little bit of the outline here. Add a little bit of water to, to fade it. Okay, now I don't have a pink quite like the picture. And so I'm trying to think, do I want to just do red? Probably. That's probably going to be the best bet is just to do a red. Because none of these uh, colors here are pink pink. Now I could add white to it. Um, we'll give that a try. I don't know that I'm going to like it as much. We'll see. So let's use our little tester paper. So here is plain red. Here, I'm going to put some of the, several scoops of the red, a little bit of the white. It's a little bit lighter, but I'm not going to get a hot pink is basically what I'm saying. Okay. So in the picture that we showed you earlier where we were using the Tombow markers, it's a hot pink. You're not going to get that. I think mm, I'll go with this little toned down version. And then if I want to add in the dark, I can. Uh, they do make some liquid watercolors that have that hot pink uh, paint. That's very nice. Okay, so this is almost too light. So I'm going to come straight back into the pure red. I'm not going to go everywhere with it. But I'm just going to give it some of this pure red into it just for some contrast, for some brightness and boldness and for some pizzazz. And then since I did this one like that with the pink first and then the darker red, I'm just going to mimic that over here. So I use this lighter pink that we mixed. I'll add that on. I need to mix a little more. Okay. 
again, you're not having to be too perfect with your painting. You, your line work has done that work for you. The line work is making the flowers. You just throw some color on there and you've, uh, and you've got it. <clears throat> While it's still wet, just using this brush, throwing some of that in there. We'll take some of the green. And uh, yes, Julie. Julie says, did you say mixed media paper works? It does. It sure does. Mixed media is great for um, watercolor uh, painting, like acrylic paint on paper. If you don't always want to have a, uh, a canvas that you're painting on. All right. And now we just pick a color for our shine bright. So let me think. I love this magenta color right here. So I'm going to get just a little on the tip and in these openings, I'm just going to start painting it. I'm not going to do any fancy technique. I'm just filling in the openings, just like coloring. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just using just the tip of that brush. Do the watercolors have to be Crayola? They sure do not. They don't. Um, I'm just showing you that it can be. It can be as something as inexpensive as Crayola. You can use whatever uh, whatever brand you've got. Now, I will say, even though Crayola is inexpensive, it is a better quality than some paints that I've seen. Like, let's say you buy a, a kit that says, you know, like, 50 pieces of art supplies and it has pastels and paint and watercolor and brushes and oil pastels, all that stuff. Those are usually no good. Um, sorry uh, if you bought that. Um, and maybe yours is good, but usually something like that, they're not good. Um, if it's uh, like a little party pack of paint, it's not so good. But Crayola is good and inexpensive. So that's what I just wanted, just wanted to show you um, an option. I also love Koi watercolors, K-O-I. They have like a travel set of watercolors that are really fun. Um, okay, y'all, that's it. We just were chit chat and we finished that picture. So uh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to head back up here. So we're done. We are done, son. And what time is it? 1038. We spent a little chit chat time. But, you know, 38-ish minutes ain't bad for a little piece and play, drawing, painting, lettering. There's a lot done today. Uh, so a few things that I'm going to point out that you may or may not have noticed that we kind of touched on. Maybe it's new to you. Maybe it's learned to you. We did the lettering one stroke at a time and connecting it. We thickened the downstroke. We uh, did the double and triple outline technique. We do that a lot. We did the wet on wet technique in some of our um, paintings or yeah, in some of our paintings and maybe that's it. That might be it. But, um, but anyway, there's lots of, lots of little things in there that maybe your first time, maybe your millionth time. I don't know. Either way, I hope you had fun with it. And don't forget, if you want to sign up for our workshop, it is going to be three nights next week. You don't have to come all three nights uh, because you're gonna, we're going to be doing the same picture in multiple formats. So even if you just come one night, you're going to get a great um, instruction. But we are doing this beautiful piece. We're going to talk about the lettering. you got tra or over here. we got traceables for the lettering to practice. Uh, we're, we are mounting it on this little wood board. We'll be doing it there and a card in your Bible journal, all the things. So, um, so if you want to join, y'all, uh, y'all be sure to sign up. I'm headed to Texas actually tomorrow. So I won't be live probably for the rest of the week unless, I don't know, unless something, unless I just get a crazy whim and go live from Texas. <laughs> but uh, I probably will not be teaching anything else for the rest of this week. But starting next week, we will, um, we'll be back for our fun workshop. So y'all share it with your friends. Uh, let us know if you've got questions. If you like this, you'll love the workshop. So we hope to see you there. All right, y'all. See you, see ya.